very often galleries are the first institutions that pick up young artists straight out of school or they find them working in their studios and they give them their first exhibition. Galleries um, really are, you know, a, a space where you get to see what is being created at the moment. And the museum is really a repository of those objects that are being created. So it, it holds the history of the period. A lot of artists start in the gallery world and it's through connections to their dealers and other curators where they start getting into the museum world and those relationships get built or those shows get planned. So are women under, you know, underrepresented in, in the art world in general? Yes. In the gallery world? Yes. In the museum world? Yes. Gallery Tally is a project that was initiated by Nicole Hebron and it basically looks at the representation of men and women in commercial galleries. First in Los Angeles and then New York and now a lot of other cities around the world. We're actually looking at the percentage of women and men that are represented at specific galleries and then artists are making posters that uh, represent that. Focusing on the kind of statistical aspect of the representation of men and women in galleries kind of highlights how dramatic the discrepancy between male and female artists are in terms of visibility and representation and so on. It's a totally open platform. Anyone is welcome to join and make a poster. You look at a gallery, you get the data, you get the numbers, and you visualize the data. You can make a poster in whatever style you want, however it occurs to you, and you'll see in the show that we have so many different approaches from text only to abstract, to representational, to graphs, to puns, to appropriated images, to collages. So it really includes a diversity of artistic voices, too. There's maybe three, 300 artists in this show. I think maybe last I heard there was 800 involved making posters. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of us now. Um, it's, it's gathering momentum. It's almost, I would say, overwhelming the number of people that are interested in this topic. We're artists, we love being artists, and we want to see a better art world. We want to see a more equal, more diverse, more rich, more complex art world. For generation after generation, we have not cared that women's production was entirely lost. The Western history of art that is, is looms large in our history, women have traditionally been almost invisible or much less visible uh, than men. And that's, a, that's a, a, a trend and a development that continues until today. Why is this happening? I mean, Nicole is pointing out to us all that this is happening in a big, giant way. But what is the real reason it's happening? One of the arguments that I've heard over and over is, well, we don't look at gender. I'm thinking about just you know, more things than just the male-female divide, um, which to me is a little provincial, but I understand the importance. For, for me, there is a sense that, you know, when I, when I look at artists, I treat them equally. That's, that's for me a, like a rule, like there is equality already existing in my gallery. The overall statistics are 70% men, so how is that possible that gender isn't playing some part of, uh, some part in that? It has to. You think you're being fair, but then when you see the numbers in your face, it's really like a different story. You know, it's like being told you're, um, you're rich all the time and you realize you're poor. Another thing that galleries will say is, well, we just look at art that's good. The implied message is then art, art by men is 70% better than art by women. There have been many philo philosophers who have tried to define what quality is. Uh, there, there, uh, some say the quality lies strictly within the work, within the aesthetic components of the work. There are other people that say, the quality is uh, something that extends beyond the work and has something to do with the conceptual interaction between the work and the viewer, or between the work and the maker of the work. There are all kinds of different uh, theories, but in the end, you cannot separate the 
question of quality from the person who defines the quality. Those two are intricately connected. Throughout history, um, the people deciding what was good and the people who were showing their work and making their work were men. So for me, it kind of gets down to the market that just blatantly art by men sells better. And I'm interested to know why, and I'm interested to know what we can do to change that. One reason that there are so many galleries that are not showing very many women is because collectors and museums in a not small part drive what's going into the market. We have to sell what people want. You're listening to what your collectors want, so they'll, they'll express interest in, in the work that they see in your gallery or, or at an art fair or on your website. And you know, it, it's a reflection. If you only have 10% women, then there's not going to be much of an opportunity for women to get the exposure. Most collectors in this country are not aware of the enormous power that they have in actually not only shaping their own collection, not only shaping the success of a particular gallery that they buy from, but also in the long run shaping what everybody sees in the museum. Collectors often look to galleries as a kind of, um, as, so, as someone who would determine like a sense of connoisseurship. Um, you know, like what's, what's valid, what's good, what's important, what's not. And so the galleries serve this kind of sorting function. The, the art market is not a objective thing, an objective truth. It is something that we create and we have the power to influence it, and we have the power to direct it in any direction we want to. It has to be more than just the market, though. I mean, what we're doing. I mean, we're doing something other than making money. And I think that's part of what she's getting at. We could just say, you know, screw it, we're just going to sell expensive handbags instead. It just has to throw in your, you know, random luxury good here. But it's art. It's a much bigger thing. And to me, that's an important part of why those statistics are, are interesting and why it matters that people have to think about it. This kind of intense um, confluence of forces around gender, art, and the economy um, all seem to be like at stake for the artists that are involved. And in that sense, um, again, there's no easy answers for any of those things. But to be involved with a big group of people who are all interested in, in asking those kinds of questions um, feels really important. The, the, the narrative that we get is a male-white narrative, and it's still that way, or that, that's kind of the, the common narrative. And so we're missing out on all of those experiences that don't fit into that, or kind of go beyond that in some way. The art that the people generated is, is one of the most important and defining uh, elements that, that tells uh, later generations about who we are and what we were all about and what our time was all about.